Big uproar in Sudan as the country continues to collapse into civil conflict. Foreign governments have since rushed to close down their embassies and move their people out to safety. Let's get you caught up. Currently, a Sudanese general is having a little tiff with a local paramilitary leader over who should be dictator for life inside Africa's third largest country. You are now caught up. If you want a quick recap on the conflict, I've linked one in the description below, but for our purposes, let's focus on the Canadian response. Canada has temporarily suspended all operations inside of Sudan on April 23rd after any sense of stability rapidly eroded inside of the country. Evacuation efforts began almost immediately. The Canadian Embassy, which is located inside of the capital Khartoum, was quickly closed and its envoys shuttled to safety. The proximity of the Canadian Embassy to the Khartoum International Airport quickly made it into one of the most dangerous areas in the country. Ottawa was tracking around 1,800 Canadians who were in the country at the breakout of hostilities. Experts claim this number is likely much higher because of the reluctance to properly register from those Canucks who were lower on the diplomatic totem pole. These Canadians, along with local Sudanese, are now experiencing daily air attacks and shelling, which have proven to be indiscriminate and deadly. Sudanese doctors have estimated that more than 400 civilians have died and over 2,000 people have been injured since violence broke out two weeks ago. At least 400 Canadians have been waiting and requesting a pickup through Global Affairs Canada. Ottawa's response has since included two Hercules and a single C-17, which have put themselves at increasing risk to evacuate more than 250 Canadian citizens, among others. Unfortunately, since fighting began on April 15th, flight operations to Sudanese airfields have become increasingly restricted. Khartoum International Airport was immediately targeted by the Rapid Support Forces Paramilitary Group, or the RSF. This is the group battling the Sudanese Armed Forces for control of strategic locations and ultimately the country. The RSF quickly spread the fighting to surrounding airfields and departure points, even injuring evacuees during their boarding on a French aircraft. Some of those remaining inside of the country have been exploring land evacuation options instead of waiting for the return of that big herc in the sky. Now this is a choice that may remove them from the immediate hotspot, but it certainly comes with its own risks. The 840 kilometers that separates Khartoum from Port Sudan have become increasingly lawless. Fighting from the warring parties have spilled out from the capital region, and several reports speak of checkpoints manned by little more than loosely veiled militias. And now indiscriminate attacks on these convoys have begun. This is likely to continue despite any ceasefire, the notion of which is so on and off again that it's likely to make any local dictator's head spin, which is perhaps why fighting has continued through every single one of them. If you do find yourself at the port, a friendly naval ship may take you out to safety. If you're a Canadian looking for that big red maple, I'm sorry, but now Ottawa suggests you seek evacuation through a commercial option. HMCS Montreal and the supply vessel Asterix are nearby, but have moved into position off port with other Allied warships in anticipation of a possible seaborne evacuation. I don't know if this is likely, but Ottawa is focused on renewing their air evacuation route as soon as possible. They doubt that any significant number of evacuees will make the dangerous road trip to the sea. At the time of this video, hundreds of Canadians remain stranded in the country. The most recent Canadian military flight occurred over the final weekend of April. It evacuated over 205 people from just outside of Khartoum, 60 of which were Canadian citizens. This will be the last flight for the time being. Small arms combat was witnessed a few hundred meters while they were loading passengers, and tracer rounds were visible from takeoff and landing. This has introduced a risk-benefit scenario that Ottawa will no longer accept. Military aircraft and about 200 troops from CFB Petawawa will remain in Jordan waiting for their next moment. Canadians in Sudan are instructed to shelter in place with their phones charged and ready to go. For those who remain, the outcome deteriorates every day. Running water has now stopped, food is becoming increasingly scarce, and the atrocities that accompany these conflicts have all begun to rear their ugly heads. All while the bombs continue to drop. Let's hope we can get our people out as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. Here's some other videos.